Stayallday.com. You are now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us out there to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And here's what we do for you here. We put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one, we got a book on the subject, and you're listening to The Daily Show. Yes, the show comes out every day in case nobody ever told you. We got a number you can text us about it. I'll tell you about that in a minute. It is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. That number is 305-384-6894. And as you are listening to the show, if you hear anything that resonates with you, anything that touches a nerve, anything that leads to a question, anything that really helps, see, helps you see things in a different light, then you send me a text to that number. Again, it's 305-384-6894. And today's topic is the genius of simplification. And yes, there is genius in simplification. The definition of the word is the process of making something simpler or easier to do or understand. Isn't it fun when somebody simplifies things? Isn't it fun for you when you simplify things? Maybe if you had a lot going on and you're trying a whole bunch of different stuff all at the same time, doesn't it make it easier when you just simplify? Don't you like when someone's explaining something to you and they just make it really simple for you to get so you don't have to ask a ton of other questions or you leave that conversation with more clarity than confusion, more answers than questions. You know exactly what to do next rather than like, um, I feel more confused than when I first start talking to this individual. Why does it matter so much to simplify things and why should you start doing it? I'm gonna answer those questions for you here today. And again, anything that resonates with you. If you are just really enjoying this show and you want to tell me how great it is, then send me a text 305-384-6894. Point number one, topic again is the genius of simplification. Number one, the easier you make things for you, the easier they will be for others to understand what you can do for them and how. So this is a point that's specifically for any of you who's ever selling anything. And in case you didn't know, we are all always selling something, even if all you're selling is yourself. The more simple you can make what you do and how you explain it, the more simple you can make it for others. Because if what you do is confusing to you, then there's no way anybody else will understand it. Maybe there are a few special individuals who can read through and see through the lines of what you're trying to explain, that you're struggling to explain yourself, they'll be able to see it and say, okay, here, let me help you kind of make that a little bit more clear so that you get it and then you can explain it to other people so that they get it. I want you to remember that even though other people out there, most of them aren't stupid, they also aren't as smart as you, which means you shouldn't expect them to be able to decipher what you can't even decipher yourself. The more clear you can say, all right, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is how I help, certain, these are the people that I help and here's how I help them. The easier it is for you to get that, the easier it is that the people that you actually wanna help understand you and they start finding their way towards you. In other words, how you do things or say things or think things needs to be simplified in your head so that you can have a simplified output for the people that you serve. For example, Every day when I open the show, I tell you exactly what you're getting here. And we make it really clear so that the people who are not looking for this know that this is probably not the right place. And the people who are looking for this know that this is the right place. I tell you, discipline, I tell you what it's going to do. Confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. I tell you exactly what this is going to do. You see the name of the show. You can probably get a pretty good idea what the show is about before you even listen to an episode because we make it really clear what we're doing, we simplify the process. Now, do I do a whole lot more things than discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative? Yes, just yesterday I was talking about selling and books and Amazon and percentages. That just goes under the umbrella of what the main thing is, which is work on your game. The work on your game serves three specific people, in case you didn't know. Number one, the person who needs more game. That should be easy to understand, right? Number two, the person who has game, but just needs to get better at showing it off. And number three, the person who has game, you feel like you're showing it, but for whatever reason, you're not getting a return on investment from the value you put out into the world. If you're one of those three people, you are listening to the right show and the right person, and you are the right person as well. And to wrap up this first point here, if you don't understand what you do or why you do it, how can anybody else understand it? If you don't understand what you're offering, why you're offering it, or who you're offering it to, or what you help other people do, if you don't understand it, why would you expect anybody else to get it? 
Has any of you ever been in a situation in life where you felt like you were you know, pretty good at what you were doing? You felt like you were offering value. You felt like you were putting game into the world, but it seemed like nobody else kind of nobody else was getting it. Like, why does nobody else get this? Why am I the only one who gets it? Like, I know what I can do. I know what I'm offering. I know there's value here. I have examples. I talked to this person. I did this. And you have these sporadic moments where you're doing something and it's resonating. And you're like, well, shit, why can't I do this all the time? Why is it? Why are people not responding to me like this all the time? The reason why people are not responding to you like that all the time is because you have not yet simplified in a way that you could articulate what you do, how you do it, why you do it, who you do it for. When you can answer those questions, that's when people will start to understand, okay, that's not quite for me, but I know somebody who that is for because they know exactly what it is. So if somebody can tell me exactly what it is they do, first of all, it'll help me to be like, okay, is that for me? Yes or no? And also I can say, even if it's not for me, you know what? I know somebody who this will be perfect for. Why? Because I know exactly what you are doing. I know exactly who you're looking for. If you can't explain that, how can anybody else understand it, let alone be able to explain it to somebody else. You know the telephone game, right? The telephone game, you tell one person something. I think I did this when I was in maybe third grade. We did an experiment in class where the teacher went to the person sitting at the, the front row on the right-hand side of the room, and she said something in the student's ear, and that student's job was to get up and go to the student sitting behind you, and you tell that same story in the ear of that person, and then they go tell the next person, next person, next person. We go all around the room, 30, 35 students. And by the time the story gets to the end of the class, the person sitting in the back at the left, they're going to say, what is the story? And the story completely changed from the first person to the 35th student. Why did the story completely change? Probably because of the complexity of the story. The more complex the story, the more it's going to change over time. I mean, look at the news, look at media. You'll see this happening all the time. Now, some of them are just actually really smart people who know that they're being manipulative. But a lot of times in life, just because things are not simple enough, people forget it. People just don't get it. You know, what is Amazon's, um, speaking of Amazon, like we talked about yesterday, what is their, their slogan or their tagline? It's the everything store. We sell everything from A to Z. That's why that Amazon logo, A to Z, we just sell everything. What is Nike's slogan? Just do it. Everybody knows that. Can anybody misconstrue that? All right? If you told that to one person and said, pass it around to 35 people, maybe if somebody misspoke, Maybe it would get messed up, but generally people would get it. The more it gets passed around, it just gets strengthened because everybody can understand it. There's no ambiguity. You want zero ambiguity in your explanations. That is simplicity. If people can't understand it without you explaining it, it is not simple enough yet. Point number two, today's topic, once again, is the value and the genius of simplicity. Number two, doing fewer things, but doing all of them better as you have more resources to devote to the few that remain. This is one of the geniuses of being, of simplifying what you do. So any of you out there, and I just use myself as an example here. I talk about a lot of things. I have people who I've coached who are business owners, people who are business professionals, people who are in between jobs, people who are athletes playing a sport, people who are looking for mindset help or mental toughness or whatever it is that they want. I talk, I talk about interpersonal relationship. I talk about leadership. I talk about uh, delegating and teaching other people things. But the brand, the main thing is four words. Work on your game. Period. Now, is there a lot of stuff that goes under that umbrella? Absolutely. But I focus on just work on your game. If someone doesn't come into that, then they'll never know about any of the other stuff. When you focus on doing fewer things, or ideally just doing one thing great, whatever that one thing happens to be, then you'll be able to do that one thing better because you have more resources to devote to that one thing. What are our five forms of investment? Time, money, attention, energy, and focus. No matter how many things you feel like you're good at or you enjoy or you wanna be involved in or you feel like you can grab a couple of hours from doing this thing and that thing and that third thing over there, understand something, you have a limit of you can only be in one place at one time. You have only 24 hours in a day. You can only pay attention to and focus on one thing at a time. No matter how good you are at a thousand things, you can only focus on one of them at once. Therefore, the fewer things you do, the more of those resources you can devote to those things and you'll get better at them because you're focusing on them. Focus it makes things larger. The more you focus on something, the bigger it becomes or the better it becomes, or if it's something bad, the worse it becomes. The more you focus on something, the more it grows. All right, focus expands things. You ignore things, they get smaller and they shrivel up and they die. 
Uh, so this will re would require, if you want to really get good at any one thing, you're going to have to kill off some of your sacred cows. And we talked about this in episode 1699, four ways to avoid living in the past forever. And one of them was about, or the whole concept I actually was about sacrificing your sacred cows. In other words, taking some ideas or some habits that you've been married to to this point in your life and killing them off anyway because it's time for you to move forward. But you had to be, this takes, uh, this requires a little bit of discipline. This is a, a mental toughness thing. You had to have the confidence of knowing that if I cut these four things off and I'm only left with these three, that I'll be able to maximize these three in such a way that it makes it worthwhile, that it makes it a good decision. The benefit is that you can give, again, more tender, loving care to the few cows who are left if you kill off all the extra cows that were you know, eating all the grass and you know, taking up all the, I don't know, what do you feed cows? I guess it's just grass, I don't know. <laughs> the benefit is you'll give more time, attention, and focus to the few that are left and you'll get better at it. But this is harder to do every single day for all of us because we always have all these options. We always have all these opportunities presented to us every day, all these new things that we can add to what we're doing. So your job is to really figure out what's the through line, what's the main thing that I, what's the main through line of everything that I'm interested in. And I'm not telling you you don't have to, that you can't be interested in more than one thing. I obviously am interested in more than one thing. Just look, at, look through the episodes, just the last 10 days of this show. How many different things have I talked about? But there's a through line. The through line is, work on your game. And I just told you the three types of people that I deal with and the three types of people that I deal with will encompass everything that I, everything that I could possibly be talking about. Whether it's an athlete, whether it's somebody writing a book, whether it's a small business owner, whether it's a student, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a parent, whether it's a person just trying to figure out who the hell they are in life. They need game, need to get better at showing their game, want to get better at getting ROI for their game. One in three, guaranteed. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is the genius of simplification. Number three, you are forced to prioritize and do what you do best when you simplify things. When you simplify and you cut off those sacred cows, you have no choice but to prioritize. Okay, what's the biggest thing here? What's the most important thing here? What can I do right now with the opportunity and the resources available to me? What can I prioritize? What do I need to prioritize? You don't have a choice. When you kill off sacred cows, you focus on the most important stuff and you eliminate the rest. You focus on the stuff that is hell yes, Right. We all know the, oh, let me not assume, the concept of hell yes or no. I'll make sure that you do know what I'm talking about because I talked about that in episode number 196. Hell yes or no, meaning that's how you decide on things. Next time you are thinking about doing something and you're not quite sure, ask yourself the following question. Is the answer to doing this hell yes? If the answer is not hell yes, then the answer is no. So anything that you're kind of mild on, you're like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. I'm all right. I'm, I'm fine with it. Any of those answers, we're not doing it. Anytime I, I say to Anna, I say, hey, we should go uh, get something to eat later. She says, okay. I say, she says, where are we going to go? I say, all right, how about we go here? She says, all right, yeah, that's cool. I say, no, we're not going there. Why? Because you're not excited about it. I want to go to somewhere you're excited. If you're not excited about it, then you should be saying no to it. Now I'm talking to you now. Okay. Hell yes or no. If the answer is not hell yes, the answer is no. And let me give you a, a secret hack to what I just told you. Most of your answers will not be hell yes. And this is a good thing. All right, so this is not a 50-50 thing, folks. So if you're not saying, if you get 10, 10 things posed to you and the answer is not hell yes, and your answer is hell yes to only one of them, that's good. Now, if your answer is hell yes to only three out of 20, that's good. That's the way it's supposed to be. You're, it is not supposed to be a balance. All right, this is not an equal deal. Hell yes or no means most of the things you will be saying no to. And you know what? You should be saying no because you're not excited about them. If you're not excited and really engaged in doing a thing, you probably shouldn't be doing it. Now, I understand there are certain things in life we got to do that we're not excited about, but your mental strategy, you should at least be thinking about, scheming about, how do I get the hell out of this because I'm not excited about it? All right, you don't want to be doing things that you're not excited about in life, do you? I mean, how many things are you involved in right now in your life that you're not excited about? Wouldn't it be great if you could just chop that off and get rid of it and do something else that you're actually excited about? Wouldn't that be fun? All right, do you believe it's possible for you? Because it is. So if you don't believe it, you should start believing it. You can do this, but the first step is believing that you can and then start thinking about how can I do it? Just how can I do it? You might not be able to do it tomorrow. Just asking yourself, how can I eliminate this thing and really focus on the hell yes things in life? This is part of your simplification. Hell yes or no. Start applying that to every decision that you need to make in your life. And I guarantee you 80% of the decisions that you've been doing and executing on that you're really not excited about, 
you can now eliminate and it will create such a, a state of clarity and mental space for you that you wouldn't even realize, you never realized it was possible, but it is possible and that's why I'm here, to help provide you some opportunities and help you see some things that you otherwise were blind to. It was always there, you were just not paying attention. Point, actually one more thing on point number three, it's better to do one thing great than to do two things good. All right, you're better off being great at doing one thing than being good at doing two things. Even though, again, as humans, especially all of us, us, us hustler types, us not just only not nailing ourselves just to one thing, but doing everything that we enjoy doing, us types, all right, many times we condition ourselves to think. All right, the more things that we can do, the better, because we can have our hands in this thing, that thing, and that thing. And again, I'm not saying that that's necessarily wrong but you need to figure out what is the through line of what you are doing and stay in your zone of genius. Your zone of genius can encompass many things, but make sure you stay in that zone. Don't step out of that zone because you're getting greedy because just because you can. All right, that is a bad decision. Eventually, you're gonna spread yourself too thin and you're not gonna be great at anything and that becomes a problem because then you're not the go-to for anything. All right, you wanna be the go-to for a specific thing and when people think of that thing, they think of you. Or when they think of you, they think of that thing. You wanna own it. If you don't own it, then no, who are you to whoever? Who are you to yourself? Point number four, the topic once again, the genius of simplicity. The smarter the person, the easier they can make things for other people to understand. A really smart person can make things really, really simple. Now, a person who makes things complicated, they might think that by making things complicated, they're showing off how smart they are. They're actually doing the opposite. A really smart person, a really genius individual makes things really, really easy for everybody to get. Any of you who uses Apple products, and I think the majority of people listening to me do, some form of Apple products, notice that they don't come with these really big user manuals. Usually it might be just a little small pamphlet, a few pages, but it's very easy to read. It's not very, um, it's not a, what's the word? It's not very complex. It's very simple to understand. Your grandma can pick it up and she don't even use the internet. She don't have any social media platform account she can use it and understand it that's why apple is that's the genius of apple that they make things very simple you could take an iphone or a macbook or an ipad out of the box and just start using it without reading any of the instructions now, that takes a high level of genius to make it that simple you understand what i said you have to be really really genius to make things simple for others and if you are really, really, you know, the opposite of genius, whatever you want to call that, stupid, simple-minded, all right, then other people have to be genius to figure out what the hell you're doing and what the hell you're saying. All right, so you want to be the opposite. All right, the smarter you are, the easier it will be for other people to understand what you do. Somebody asks you what you do, you be able to explain it to them. Not, you only, it's not even any explaining you need to do. You should be able to tell them what you do in such a way that they get it. Doesn't mean they're interested, doesn't mean they're gonna buy from you, but they get it. They understand exactly what you're doing, how you're doing it, who you're doing it for. So somebody asked me what I do. I would say something like, I give, I give different answers, depending on what it is. A lot of times people ask me, they propose something and then I just answer yes or no. <laughs> so people see me and they say, are you a basketball player? I say, well, I used to be. And then I leads to a whole different conversation. But I would say something. Someone just asked me, what do I do? I say, well, you know what? It would be difficult for me to explain, but let me tell you the type of people that I help. I help three types of people. Number one, people who need more game. Number two, people who need to get better at showing their game. Number three, people who need to get better at selling their game. And now that's a whole, now again, I would say that to someone who I actually want to start a conversation with because I could not say that to anybody and it not lead to a further conversation. So again, I got, I got a kind of a bag of, I got a bag of options that I can use based on who's asking the question and how I feel in the moment and where we happen to be at. But all that being said, let's continue here on point number four. The genius of a product is its simplicity. You understand what to do without needing a manual. That's what makes Apple products so great in other products. Any of you ever bought something from, you know, Ikea? Ikea is pretty good. They're not Apple level, but they're pretty good that you could take something out the box and it has that diagram. It usually don't have any words, right? It has the pictures and you can just put it together. Most of the time we can put it together. Uh, you gotta have, a, a, you gotta have a, a pretty competent level of you know, understanding to be able to put those things together. Not everybody can do it. So that's why, and that, that has nothing to do with your level of intelligence. That has to do with Ikea's intelligence. Because the simpler, the smarter the people at Ikea are, if they get smarter people there, it'll be easier for anybody to put those things together. But since everybody can't put them together, that means Ikea needs to step their game up. It's not that the customers need to get better at putting together a, a desk 
is that they need to get better at explaining it so that people can understand it. They need to go take a class from Apple. If Apple was given a class, they need to hire Apple as a consultant. How can I make this stuff more simple so that anybody can put it together and there's no complexity and there's no call on a customer service on like, hey, part 1B is missing and I don't understand why this leg is backwards. And you know, again, that has nothing to do with you as the consumer, that has everything to do with the person who created it in the first place. All that being said, recapping today's class, was it the genius of simplicity? Defined as the process of making something simpler or easier to understand. Why does this matter? Number one, the easier you make it for you, the easier it will be for others to understand what you can do for them, how you can do it, and who exactly you're doing it for. In other words, how you do things need to be simple so that you can have a simplified output and explanation to the people who need it. Number two, doing fewer things but doing all of them better, you will have more resources to devote to the few that remain. And then, therefore, you will just get better at your strengths and stop focusing on the things at which you are good, mediocre, or worse. And number three, you are forced to prioritize at what you do best. When you're forced to prioritize at what you do best, you get better at the things you do best. Thus, so you become a, the go-to individual for those things. Focus on the things to which you say hell yes and eliminate the things that are anything less. And number four, the smarter the person, the easier they make things for others to understand. A really smart person makes things really simple for everyone else. And a person who is not that smart makes things really complex for everyone else. Now, if I made this simple for you, or if I didn't, if I failed, you send me a text. <laughs> if I succeeded, you tell me too. The number is 305-384-6894. Send me a text. Let me know that this episode resonated with you. If you have a follow-up question, if you have something that I could maybe talk about that I haven't addressed, or maybe a, a follow-up to what I talked about here today that would go uh, somewhere that would help answer something for you, make things more clear for you, because that's the whole point, right? 305-384-6894. Work on your game. Dre all day.